Did I allocate my 2D arrays incorrectly back in my image processing video? Well, maybe. I mean, wrong might be a strong word, but let's talk about it. Hey folks, welcome back. I recently made a video where we did a little image processing in C. If you're interested in making rainbow tinted images or understanding PPM file formats or something like that, check that one out, might be useful. But a few of you suggested that I allocated my two-dimensional array the wrong way, and you suggested instead that I use just one big contiguous block, and that sounds nice, maybe that's an improvement. So anyway, whether it was wrong or right, today I want to talk about two-dimensional arrays and hopefully we can learn something new. This video is brought to you by you, all of you wonderful people who support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support and help in making this channel work. But now let's take a look at the code. Okay, so I'm starting with the image processing code that we did in the previous video. Specifically, I want to focus on uh, this area right down here where we allocate space for our two-dimensional array of pixels. So now in the previous video, I did this by first allocating an array of pointers, each of which points to a row of pixels. And then we have this for loop that goes through and we allocate allocate each individual row separately. Now, some folks wanted to know why I didn't just allocate the entire 2D array as a single contiguous block, and I didn't for one reason, and that's simplicity. So I find that for beginning programmers, allocating 2D arrays like this creates a little less confusion, even though it's a little more code. So that's what I went with in that video. But there are a few reasons why you might want to have just one contiguous block. One is that you may be working with a graphics library or something that assumes that your image is going to be one contiguous block. So that might be a one good reason. Another reason is it probably gives you better memory locality. So we've talked about this in previous videos, but we don't have control over where malloc or calloc play places the blocks of memory that we allocate. Now in this example, they are probably going to be fairly close to one another because it's the only thing I'm allocating, so it's just kind of allocating all probably in about the same place, but that may not be the case in all applications, and so since we are often accessing pixels around the same time that we're accessing nearby pixels, allocating them in one block so that it all keeps them together might give you better cache performance, fewer page faults, things like that. So just better memory performance in general. Also, another reason is rather than calling malloc or calloc so many times, we can just call it once, so that's also going to save us a little bit of time. Okay, so I'm going in this example, I'm gonna change a few things just to make it a little more friendly for what I want to do today. So the first is I'm going to come in here and say I'm going to make this uh, this pixels variable more general. I'm just going to make it a void pointer because what I'd like to do is I want this example to be able to work in two different modes. So you can see side by side what has to change if you want to go to a contiguous array. So for this, this, I mean, there are other ways we could do it with typecasting and things like that. But for this, this is basically me reminding myself that this thing is just, it could be different things depending on which mode it's gonna be in. Okay, now the other change I wanna make to the ppm.h file is down here. I'm gonna add a new function. Um, we'll probably implement it in a minute, but uh, it's gonna return a pixel pointer and it's gonna be called ppm pixel. So I'm just gonna make, this is a function that allows me to access a pixel in the image. And because I'm gonna be storing these in slightly different ways, I want code that uses pixels to basically, or uses the image just to access them in the same way, regardless of how it's stored. So we're going to have a ppm image pointer. So we'll pass in an image, and then we're going to have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Okay, so we'll implement that in a minute, but let's first, before we get too into the changes, let's go back to ppm.c to see what, and of course I broke a few things, we'll fix them, don't worry. But let's look at what needs to change. So if we come down here, this first thing right here, so we are, we are calling calic to allocate this array of row pointers, so pointers to pixels, one for each row, right? That's what we're doing here. So for this example, what I wanna do is define a, um, preprocessor macro, and we're gonna say, so if it's defined, so I'm gonna call it contiguous mem, and we're gonna say, okay, so if it were in contiguous mode, and if we're not, just do what we did before. Okay, so this is, if we're not doing contiguous arrays, this is basically what we're gonna do. That's just fine. So if we wanted a contiguous, when I say like a contiguous block of memory, what we're gonna do is rather than just allocate a series of row pointers, we're going to, and I'm gonna call malloc here because it's actually a little bit faster too. So malloc doesn't zero out the memory, so it's 
usually just a hair faster than Calic. Not a lot, but a little bit. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, well, how many pixels do we need? Well, the number of rows times the number of columns. And let's just multiply it by the size of a pixel, not a pixel pointer, and then take this off. Okay, so this will just basically say how many pixels do I need? And uh, we're just, it's gonna be one big massive array. And so this should work for us. This will get just a block of memory that has enough pixels for the entire image. And so this is all that has to change here when we actually allocate the block. Now down here, we gotta change things because now this only happens if we, you know, if we're using contiguous memory, you know, one contiguous block, then we don't need to do this every time. So we might come down here and say, if and if, so if not defined, Find contiguous, if I can spell. Okay, so we'll allocate space if we are not using contiguous memory, plus you notice it's giving me an error, and it's because this is a void pointer, not an array. So let's come in here and say, we'll have to do, let's just cast this guy to a pixel pointer, pointer, pointer to a pixel pointer and then we can dereference it, so that should be okay. And then we can actually come in here and use array notation, so that should work fine. Okay, and we're also gonna come down here and change how we access the pixels. This is why I wanted that PPM pixel function, because um, in the different modes, we will actually access these points, the pixels, slightly differently. So let's come down here and instead of saying result arrow pixels, let's just call PPM pixel result x, y, and we're just going to replace each of these with this, okay? Otherwise, it's exactly the same. We are just grabbing a pointer to the pixel we care about in the image using our function. So this returns a pointer and then we can just access the red, green, or blue member of that pixel. There are other ways we could do it. This is just how we're doing it for today. Okay, so now that we're actually using this thing, we probably should implement it. So let's go back up here. Let's put this up at the top here. And I'm just gonna say, so let's if def are contiguous mem and so we're gonna have two different versions of this function one for contiguous memory and one for just the way we did it in the previous video where we're doing each row separately so let's start with the one where we're accessing the rows separately this is gonna be pretty simple we're just going to say i want to cast my image pixels. Okay, so we're going to cast that as a pointer. And then we're going to index y and x. Remember, y goes first because we're doing it by rows first. So we select the row first and then the column. And then because we're returning a pointer, we're going to take this whole thing and get the address of it. Okay. So pretty simple, because this is gonna be used a lot and I want it to be really fast, I'm also going to uh, tell the compiler. The compiler will probably inline this without my hint, but I'm just going to let it know it can go ahead and inline it if it, you know, if it wants, if it feels so inclined. Okay, now what should we do if we are dealing with one big contiguous block? We're going to do something kind of similar, but instead we're just going to say it's a pixel pointer, right? So that's what we're gonna call image arrow pixels. Okay, so we're gonna cast this whole thing to a big array of pixels. And then what's the index of the one that we want? Well, we're gonna do just the, so y, remember y is the, the row number. So y multiplied by the images number of columns. That is how big each row is. Okay, so this basically gets us to the beginning of the right row. And then we will just add x, which is our column number, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, I do need to come in here and grab the address. Okay, now this is how, this is one way to do the contiguous version. There's actually another way. And that is using VLAs or variable length arrays, which are not supported by all compilers or all C standards. But I'll show you how to do that one as well, because that allows you to use array notation uh, you know, maybe it's a little more natural for some of you. I don't know, but let's take a look at how we do that. And just for, I'm just going to put, I'm going to define contiguous memory here, just so it lights up the code that I want. I'll take that out in a second. Please remind me if I don't do it. So this is how we would do it just using arithmetic. If I wanted to use VLAs, what we could do here is just define, so I could say, for example, I want a pointer, I'm gonna call this pixel array. So it's a pointer to an array and the size is image rows by image calls, the number of columns. And then we're just going to assign that to image pixels. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm saying, 
I'm declaring a pointer to an array that is two-dimensional, this many rows, this many columns. Now this is, again, not always gonna be supported by all compilers, but if your compiler does support it, then you're basically telling the compiler what the size of this, you know, what the geometry, the dimensions of this array is, and that allows the compiler to then do this arithmetic for you. And then you could do something like just return the address of p array y x sorry, pixel array YX. Okay, so this is the version. Okay, the VLA version. If you like VLAs, great, use them. If not, you can use this one up here. Both of these basically are doing the same thing, just one is using VLAs to get you there. As always, let me know if you wanna see more about VLAs or any other topic, um, you know, in another video, and I'll see what I can do. But okay, now that we have our method for accessing, I take this out so I don't forget, um, and then I'm gonna come down here, okay, so, we got to make sure, so destroy here, again, this right here, this for loop, it's not needed if we're doing contiguous memory, so if I just say, if not defined, contiguous mem, and then in here we just need to say we want to cast this as a pixel pointer pointer. Okay, so we're gonna cast pixels to be the right type, and then, okay, so yeah. So basically, if we are not using contiguous memory, you'd still need to go through and free each row. Otherwise, you just have these two free calls. So again, we save a little bit of code there if we use contiguous memory. Now let's come down here. So same thing as before, uh, rather than accessing these directly, what we are going to do is replace this with, with ppm, Pixel image X, Y, okay. We'll do that for green and blue. Okay, so I think that's all for ppm.c. Also, uh, we access the arrays directly over here in example.c, I believe. Yep, yep, right here. So same thing. Basically just need to come in here and say, ppm pixel image x, y, and replace that. And we'll have to do the same thing over here where we're reading the pixel. Okay, okay, so now that should, it should all work. We basically should be able to define that contiguous mem macro and then it will just either put us, it'll put us in contiguous memory mode or we can leave it out and then it'll just be in normal mode. So one last change to allow us to see that clearly, let's make a change to our make file. And really all I'm gonna do here is just add, there's a few different ways we could do this, but I'm just gonna make a separate version here that is going to create a second executable with an underscore C at the end. That's gonna be the contiguous version. And then right here, we're just going to say contiguous mem. Okay, so this is going to be the equivalent. So dash D here is basically the equivalent of putting a pound define somewhere in a header file saying, hey, this thing is defined everywhere. So we're going to compile two different versions, one with contiguous memory and one without contiguous memory. And so if we come in here and I didn't mess anything up, we should end up Sure enough, we've got two binaries right here. So yeah, so then I can just come in here and we can run just example with our sable.ppm file. Okay, so we can run it. This is the version that has, that's just the original version, or I can say example underscore C, and this is the one that uses contiguous memory. And if we want, we could time them both and just see if one's faster than the other. And I mean, maybe just a tiny bit. In this case, we're not seeing much of a difference. I think you might be more likely to see a performance difference in a system that is working with more images or just has more going on on the heap where this program is actually spending most of its time not in allocating memory. It's spending most of its time working on pixels and everything's pretty close together anyway. So yeah, so I just don't think we're seeing much of a difference where in some programs you might actually see a difference. But hey, I hope you learned something new about two-dimensional arrays today. Let me know if there's some topic you really want to see in a future video and uh, like, subscribe, all those things. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.